Regard, œil euh, avisé, prunelles aiguisées, la midinale est aux aguets. Par Pablo Pilovivien, tous les jours à 12h30. Hello Caroline Emke. You just published Our Desire at Les Editions du Seuil. We don't know exactly if it is an essay or a personal testimony on desire. Uh, is Our Desire, your desire especially, a political matter, you think? Um, I think <laughs> that's part of the question. When I started to desire the way I desire, I thought it was something intimate. I thought it was something individual and I thought my desire uh, belonged to me. But then if you're gay, if you're queer, uh, many, many, many people think that my desire is their desire or that they can interfere with it or comment on it or judge it. So to some extent it's made a political issue whether I like it or not. I would prefer this to be uh, less relevant uh, but we live in a world where it's made relevant and so it is a political issue. So w what is like the importance of, of your sexuality in the building of your identity? On, or of your gender? I think first of all what is important is for every teenager who discovers desire and love and lust and sexuality um, it's difficult to come to terms with emotions that you feel or desire that you feel don't really quite know how to understand them or how to express them and if you're gay or if you're queer it's particularly difficult because Um, there's such a taboo around it. Uh, it's not being taught in school. You don't read books in school where it's explicitly discussed as one way of loving or one way of desiring. You don't very often see films or theater plays where it's discussed when you're a teenager. So um, I think it's difficult to come to terms with a desire that is just less visible and is more repressed. Um, and I think part of uh, why I wrote a book about this was that I wanted it to be uh, a book for the next generation uh, to have a book that I didn't have when I was a teenager. But do you want to claim that homosexuality is normal? Uh, it's as normal as you know anything else. Uh, I don't know if that's a claim, yeah. it's just a, it's a given. You know, mm. I, uh, I, you know, it's a natural uh, given, like any other form of desiring. Yes, but w what do you think about like queer politics that claim that they don't want to be normal uh, in order to be able to question your, uh, our society? Sure, but that's a different claim. I mean, one claim is to say, um, you know, my desire is normal and natural, just like any other desire is and I think that's reasonable to claim uh, because that's already subverting uh, you know a heteronormative uh, social claim that always wants to uh, denounce us as perverts or as sick or as whatever so that's one uh, that's one claim to normalcy um, and at the same time of course you can say um, well with that desire and the way we're being presented or marked, um, you, you, you can say you want to destabilize that, you want to subvert that, you don't want that kind of um, normalcy that is normative in our society. Mm. So you don't want like to 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 make like homosexuality normal. It's not like a, I don't a know what that's supposed to mean. <laughs> I mean, if 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 I'm if you mean, do I do I want to stop permanently demonizing uh, queerness or homosexuality as wrong, as false, as less valuable, as something? Uh, uh, that you can look down on as something that can be hated, attacked. Um, do you, do, if, if you ask me, do I want homosexuals to be, um, you know, beaten up, imprisoned, criminalized, killed in many, many countries in the world because they are considered not normal or not natural, then of course I want this to be accepted as something, you know, natural and normal, just like any other form of loving or desiring. 
So you, you talked a lot about the construction of uh, desire, of your desire. Uh, is it possible like, to build desire uh, without outside any standards? That's a very good question. Um, I do think there's always, uh, you know, structures and conditions of power. There's always uh, matrices and codes that, you know, include some people and exclude others that define certain forms of gender, certain forms of performativity, certain forms of desire as, you know, better or more acceptable than others. And of course, you're trying to find different spaces, you're trying to find different languages to express yourself in, in a freer way, in a more open way, in a less um, painful way, I would say. Uh, and yet, of course, also those ways will then come with new codes, with new matrices, Uh, you know, and, and probably with new norms. So I think uh, probably each generation has to struggle again uh, to subvert those norms uh, that, that produce them. Uh, in France, we often oppose two components um, of the left side. Uh, we, what we call la première gauche, the first left side, which is deeply Marxist and based on uh, class conflicts, and la deuxième gauche, the second left side, more based on defending of uh, minorities' rights. Uh, do you think th such a dichotomy is relevant? You uh, know, I think opposing? it's, it's uh, I think there's, you know, movements on the left and on the right who are trying to make that distinction relevant because they want to divide people. And they're trying to, you know, prioritize. They try to say nowadays, oh, there's, you know, the white working class uh, and their issues, and they claim their issues are economic or social and are more relevant than the issues of the so-called minorities, of the so-called non-working class, which mm -hmm. is absurd already, uh, you know, women or, or people of color or, or gays and queers. Um, and it's silly. I mean, you know, an, an Algerian factory worker, uh, you know, who's Muslim, uh, is as much part of the working class as he's part of the minorities that struggle for recognition. So um, I think get rid of these. Um, if we try to say these rights are more important than those or these forms of marginalization are more urgent to be solved than those, we've already lost. I have a last question. You are German. The political situation in Germany is quite complicated with the rise of uh, the AfD, Alternative für Deutschland, the extreme right party. What is your opinion on that? Do you think a clear future is still possible or is this rise uh, inevitable? No, I mean, look, I've been fighting against that rise mm. for years and years now. My previous book, which is also out in France, Contre la haine, has exactly to do with these movements. Um, I think what we're now seeing is, unfortunately, exactly what, what I thought would happen if you do not really call these people what they are. I mean, they're right extremists, they're right radicals, they're fascists, uh, they really want to undermine all democratic institutions. This is not only against refugees, this is not about migration, this is really about attacking you know, democracy, attacking the European Union, attacking transnational perspectives. Um, and I do take it really seriously, but then you know, I'm, a, I'm a writer, so I'm... I'm, I'm and I'm, a fighter. <laughs> and a fighter, yes. And, and so I, I have to work with and for uh, you know, utopia. So that's my, that's my task. You, you just spoke about like the refugees, but even on the left side, the vice president of Die Linke, Sarah Wagenknecht, uh, just created a new political movement, yeah. Aufstehen, which calls to limit the numbers of uh, refugees. Yeah. How, how do you relate to the current situation with refugees in, in, in Germany? Do you think it is a good solution, what you did? Uh, I, th you I, think it's, I think it's uh, egocentric, I think it's narcissistic, I think she is highly interested in her own career. I don't really think she cares about 
you know, a left perspective. I mean, that's that concerns uh, the figure of Sarah Wagenknecht. Um, but as a, I don't think this is a left project. This is a new nationalist project uh, that seems that wants to divide the working class between those that are white sort of vile German working class and all the rest of the working class and all the other minorities. You know, I, I, think it's, I think it's politically wrong. I think it's strategically wrong. Um, and I don't think neo-nationalism is the solution for any problem, uh, whether social, economic or political. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Caroline Emke. As I said, you just published Our Desire at Notre Désir at Les Editions du Seuil. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much.